Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you can see, this week uh, it snowed. We got about three or four inches. Uh, so it's going to be a bit more interesting. But um, just so you know, what today's focus is going to be out here is uh, I'm going to show you guys my open fire cooking setup uh, for bushcraft. And so I'm going to, I may readjust it a little bit. If you've seen any of my other, other videos, I may add some rocks and things like that. But the main thing is, is today, uh, I'm going to show you more specifically what my open fire cooking setup is. So, um, it's snowy. We got to get after, get a fire going, don't we? All right, let's go on. Yeah, there. Yeah, you don't want you don't want to be in there. It's a big dirty mess. Okay, so I had to clear out the fire pit. Um, this is obviously the beginning of an open fire cooking setup, and so. Um, I have a rock that I put here when I made the fire pit last year. Get out of there, Millie. Come on, get out of there. Get out of the fire pit. That helps protect the ground, make it, makes it so that nothing catches fire in the like roots or things like that. Stay out of there. Um, so I needed to get that bare spot nice and clean um, so I can put my, my starter material there. So that's the first step of having an open fire cooking set up. Okay, so I've been gathering wood. You can see that I've got uh, some smalls here. Uh, I found a couple big pieces of wood that I'm gonna use uh, for my setup. I, I have some fat wood, so I'll come over and show you that. I've split the fat wood. So I'm gonna try and make some shavings out of that and maybe some smalls out of that. Once I get all of that done, I get all of the, uh, the items gathered for making the fire. I'll get the fire going, obviously. And, uh, and then I'll show you what I'm doing for the uh, fire setup and cooking here in just a little bit. So, get back. Okay, so you can see here that I've got some shavings from, um, from the fat wood. Get back, Millie. Get back. Um, and so what I do to get the shavings is I just take my knife, a nice sharp knife. I take a piece of fat wood. Get back, Millie. Um, and then I just shave the fat wood. You can see it's real thin. I've already started shaving. Stay back. Um, and I just kind of, I use some pressure. I make a curl like that. So you could, hopefully you can see how thin that is. And I'm just using pressure and, and, and I'm, I'm being calculated about this. I'm being careful about this. And I'm making small, small little, oops, that time it broke off. That's okay. This is all highly flammable. And so I'm just making small little shavings. So if you've already, you already know how to start a fire and you're here to learn my, what my cooking setup is out on my open fire cooking setup then uh you know this this might be child's play for you but i just wanted to show you um you know kind of the, some of the steps along the way for how i set my fire up um to get a nice good roaring fire so one of the first steps is obviously uh tinder and so this is not tinder necessarily it's starter more so but this is what i love to use for my starter. It's just so flammable. And I'm gonna use my ferro rod today to get this started. So we will do that. Now all this wood is pretty wet, so this might actually take a little bit of extra effort once I get the once I get this starter material, this fat wood going. It might take a little bit of effort to get these smalls actually started, but luckily I got a bunch of fat wood. Maybe that will help. So you can see how quickly that started up. 
it's awesome. It's an awesome way to get a fire started. So now, the question is, will it stay lit with all this wet wood? I did find some good dry pieces, just a matter of how dry is it? Is it dry, is it dry enough? So I found some good wood, um, and uh, I think it's cherry. Not wet on the inside at all. Obviously it's snowy, so we gotta keep it out of the snow, but I'm no tree expert, so or wood expert, but I think this is cherry. Um, you know, it looks, it's got this like reddish hue here smells nice when I cut it but it is it split without any effort so I think it's gonna do well for cooking yeah you can really see like the contrast in color between the regular wood here and the bark layer it's beautiful wood you can see the actual bark. I have no idea. Maybe if you know what kind of tree it is just by looking at the type of wood this is. I think it's cherry, but if you know, could you tell me in the comments? I'd love to learn more about tree identification. Um, it's obviously a good skill to have. Um, I can identify like hardwoods versus pines and things like that, but I'd like to get better otherwise. We need to cut more wood. Come on, let's go cut more wood. Get back. You can't help. Your paws can't do anything. Get on back. Stay back. See how easy that split? It's crazy. Get back. Well, it's not crazy, but it's nice. Get back. I told you before, you can't help. Get away from the tripod. Get away from the tripod, Millie. Come on over here. Or behind me, one or the other. No, no, no. Get back. Get back. The dog is difficult to hang with when I'm trying to make fires. She is very loyal, as you can see. A little bit needy, well, a little bit on an understatement. I guess she's really needy. But that's okay, I love her. Oh man, I'm in love with this wood.
Let's go warm up. Oh, you know, I wouldn't normally bring a tarp uh, for the ground, but for Millie, she gets cold easily. So I brought her a towel around here just to lay on, a tarp to keep the towel dry, and it's better than nothing, I think. It's the first time I've tried it this way, and it may not be a good idea. We'll find out. Right, Millie? We may never do this again. It's not much to lay on, is it? Here, come here. Whoa, okay, that's slippery, huh? You like that? Better than nothing, huh? You wanna get it up closer? So for those of you who came, uh, because you want to see a cooking setup, an open fire cooking setup. Um, mine is really simple. I think that everybody should keep it really simple. And so I'm going to show you what I use. And I think that if you're going to be doing daily bushcrafting, you don't need to make it complex. So first and foremost, um, you need something to cook your food on. I have this great. Very simple grate. I think it's like 12 inches by maybe like six and a half. Comes with a little bag to keep the uh, keep the thing in, which is nice so you don't get the inside of your rucksack or your backpack all dirty when you're carrying this out after a day out. Uh-oh. Burning your bed. So that's that's one of the main things. Another extremely important thing, cannot go out without this, or some variation of this, is a cookware set. Now I happen to have a titanium cookware set. It has fold out handles with sil uh, silicone grips. You know, these get hot, but they are actually quite, they stay cool enough to grab off a fire, so that's nice. I bring a cup so I can make uh, stuff to drink if I want Whoops. and two pots um, and so you know I, I make all kinds of different things like potatoes vegetable soup things like that either way if you want to boil water for anything uh, or make soup of any kind um, you need these and so whether it be for boiling water for um, you know sanitizing the water so you can drink it maybe something from a creek or maybe you know just for that those soups that I was mentioning either way you got to have something like this in order to be able to make uh, make that happen so this is absolutely crucial it's extremely simple just it goes inside of itself like you saw when I took it out everything goes together and and fits in this in this little bag and it goes inside my bag really easily the other thing you have to have and this might seem obvious is water um, and you know unless unless you plan on boiling water um, when you're out in the woods uh, you got to bring it in now I do have some water over over here um in like a swamp and i could probably find some you know clean water where it's coming out of a spring here nearby um, but the reality is is that when i go out on the average week to enjoy myself in the woods and i want a basic open fire cooking setup um or, or just over a twig stove or whatever the cooking setup is i like to make it as um, challenging but yet as easy as possible when I'm out and so for me that means bringing in the majority of my water I have this which is just a regular Nalgene bottle and then I have a bladder in my backpack and that gives me um, I'll see 90 90 like nine ounces or almost a hundred almost a hundred ounces anyways of water um, when it's not snowy out when you're making a fire for cooking over you have to have a lot of water 
Um, you know, I don't always see people do this online, but um, it is reckless, in my opinion, to be out in the woods and not have a lot of water to manage a fire if things get out of hand. I've said this in my other videos, uh, but it is absolutely crucial that you have a way to put out a fire, or at least deaden the fire, if things get out of hand. Now, today, it is snowy. So I can get I can get snow from all around. I mean, it's all around me, obviously. So I can use snow to deaden the fire. So it's uh, especially nice today. Um, so that's my setup. There's nothing else to it. I like to keep it simple. Now, my grill, or my grate rather, when I put it on this fire, is not the most stable. Today I had planned on getting some rocks and um, arranging the fire pit in a shape so I could push coals under it. I'm just not gonna be able to do that today because I got a later start than I wanted. But um, either way, it's extremely simple to be able to put that grate on the fire, get the food up off of the coals so it's a little bit less dirty and um, maybe you'll burn it less uh, if you arrange it just right. And so that's really all that you need when you're out in the woods. Great pots, pans. Um, I don't even have a full blown pan. I just got that little shallow pan thing that I showed when I was showing you my titanium kit. And, um, and then some water. That's it. So if you're, if you're out and about and you want to make, you know, make something, get those items and you'll be able to bushcraft and cook in the woods with just that. So now I'll show you what uh, I do as I cook over the fire and you know sometimes it's haphazard because I'm working with what I got the shapes of the logs and things like that so um, you'll see how I go about that here in just a minute so the other thing that you have to do when you're setting up your fire for cooking is you have to have and this is Again, this might seem like a silly thing uh, to a lot of people, but you can't just get a fire going and then um, you can't just get a fire going and then just you know put your food on it because the fire won't be hot enough to cook your food. A um, number of things could happen. Um, these might all seem obvious, but you know you could undercook your food that could get you sick. You could undercook your food. You might just not enjoy it. Um, or if you have limited time and you don't get a really good bed of coals going you just might not be able to cook your food in a reasonable amount of time while you're out bushcrafting and practicing these skills. And so you gotta find really good dry wood like we did today, and you have to get a nice good fire going. Um, Millie is crazy, she's just gotta get into everything. She's not even a cat, she thinks that she's a cat because she's so curious. <clears throat> Anyhow, you have to get a really good bed of coals going. Are you just, what are you trying to do here? You're trying to make everything difficult. You have to get a really good bed of coals and then once you get a good bed of coals you use some logs on the outside of the of your coals to make a a, a, a foundation of sorts and so that foundation is going to allow you to put your grate on those bigger logs or rocks so that you can have your food set up over the fire and it won't just sit on top of the coals directly and so it's going to be a little bit harder today with with what I have, because I didn't get to rearrange the rocks like I wanted, but we're gonna do our best. But the key thing is, is remember, as you're building your hotbed of coals, add bigger logs to the outside edge to give yourself a sort of foundation so that when you set your cooking grate down on top of the fire, it's got something to support these edges, and then your food sits there up above the fire and coals, and it gets that nice radiant heat to cook on. So I'm gonna get the foundation started um, a little bit better than I have it, and then we're gonna get cooking. Watch out. Now, these are wet pieces of wood. They were sitting here from the last time I made a fire. I'm gonna use those, because they're not gonna catch fire easy, so they'll, they'll hang out on the edges a little bit easier. Um, and they're big. So it's gonna, again, give me that foundational, foundational part of the fire pit. It's gonna allow me to get this stuff cooking and keep it up off of the coals directly. You can cook it on the on the logs directly, but it's not my favorite. It burns easy. I'm gonna amp the fire up a little bit so I can get some of these other pieces going in the fire 
as you can see here, um, I've got the grate over the coals. It's nice and hot. I do have more flame that I would prefer, but I think it's gonna be just right. So we're gonna get this chicken on the fire. Smells good, doesn't it, Millie? Stay back. Now, oh, one thing that I forgot, which I actually don't use often, are tongs. <laughs> I'll be able to use my fingers. I'll just have to be careful. Since I forgot her toy, the new toy today, snowballs, which is actually perfect because the likelihood of her finding the actual snowball is pretty low. Now, I got chicken smell on my fingers, so that'd make it a little bit easier. But if I didn't have chicken smell, she'd never, she'd never find it probably. She'd be looking all day and keep her busy. Lord knows Millie his oh, high strung dog. Okay. And there is the reason why this setup probably won't be the best for the dog. Kind of hot, huh? Get back. You got a piece. Perfectly cooked on the inside. Outside, mostly good. A little more burn than I prefer, but that's okay. Well, guys, Millie and I are going to go ahead and call it a night. Uh, we're going to get the fire put out here in just a minute pack up our stuff and uh, head on home. And I appreciate you stopping by. If you found value in the video, feel free to hit the, the like button. Um, if you didn't, let me know what you didn't like. I'd, I'd love any, any criticism that you have, constructive or otherwise, I don't mind. I just, wanna, I just want some feedback if you don't mind. And uh, um, if you like the channel overall, feel free to subscribe as well and hit the bell notification up in the corner or down below, wherever it happens to be at the time you're watching this video. And you'll get notified every time I upload a video. And my goal is to upload a video every Sunday. So I appreciate you stopping by this Sunday. And uh, until next Sunday, it was nice meeting you in the woods today. Have a good one.